It's very humbling when you make a mistake in public. You can have a, a really good plan. You know what you should do or say. Uh, but we make some boo-boos. We make some mistakes. And I think Christmas is a great time when we remember God's generosity because he knows us. Not just in the public place, he knows the inner thoughts of our hearts and our actions all the time. And yet he loves us and offers forgiveness. Well, as we uh, look into God's word before Pastor Delan comes with a message, uh, Mitch will come and read from Luke chapter 2. Thanks, Mitch. Good morning, everyone, and Merry Christmas. Okay. Um, today's Bible reading is from Luke uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 8 to 20. <clears throat> and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you, I bring you good news to great joy that will, that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with an angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace on men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into the heaven, the shepherds said to, uh, to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and to see this thing that ha has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread a word concerning what has been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed and what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just, just as they had been told. Thank you, Mitch, for bringing that reading. A Merry Christmas, everyone. Good to see you all and those who are joining online. Let me add a welcome to our Korean congregation who is joining via Zoom. Um, it is nice of you to be part of this day with us celebrating. There's a story of a, of a little boy who, uh, during <clears throat> the Great Depression, he, um, he heard that a circus was coming to town. And um, he went quickly and told his dad, Dad, I want to buy a ticket uh, because they were so poor. The dad said, well, I can't really afford to buy you a ticket. So this little boy worked so hard day and night and he uh, managed to get a ticket with a little bit of help from his father. And um, finally, the day arrived when the circus came to the town. He was so excited, so thrilled, so joyful. And he, he grabbed his ticket, put it in his pocket, and he ran to the main street. And then he saw this, this parade going by uh, with the clowns and the tigers, big elephants, the band, music. And he was so excited. He was so glad that he could make it. And then as, the, as a clown walked by, he, he quickly grabbed it to his pocket and grabbed his ticket and gave it to the clown. And after the parrot has gone um, by, he went home. Then the father was a bit kind of suspicious. Why did he come so quickly? Um, so he asked the boy to describe the circus. And then he, heard, and he realized what had happened. So he took the boy to a side and said, son, um, you didn't really see the circus you actually saw only the parade. If you miss that, you have missed the, missed the circus as well. Right, you got it? Yeah, maybe? Um, well, sometimes, I think with all that's happening around, usually during Christmas, I think we 
miss the circus as well. We miss what is the real joy of Christmas. We enjoy the parade so much, we miss what really brings joy in Christmas. So we're going to look at a little bit of, of that theme. What brings real joy over Christmas, especially during this season? But before we go any further, allow me to lead us in a short word of prayer and commit this time to God. Our Father, we thank you for this opportunity for us to spend a bit of time in your word. Lord, with all that's happening around, help us to know what Christmas really is all about and what is the real joy giver in Christmas. And we ask this for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. So this year, for obvious reasons, some of us are not able to do the things that we usually do over Christmas, right? Most of us, uh, most of the world is in lockdown, including parts of our northern beaches in Sydney. We can't have big parties, we can't go on holidays, maybe you can't afford to buy gifts. Some of us can't be with our family and friends this Christmas. And I heard someone saying earlier, uh, before Christmas, uh, what is the point of putting up decorations if we can't have people over Christmas, on Christmas Day? And adding to that, this year has been a very difficult year for some of us, isn't it? We've lost work, grief over cancelled holidays or big parties, celebrations. Maybe some of you are grieving the loss of a relationship, perhaps even a loss of a loved one this Christmas. Some of you had to go through uh, sickness and surgeries, and some of you are really anxious about what is ahead in 2021 and beyond. There's a bit of fear, isn't it? Do you sense a bit of a loss of cheerfulness, lack of, lack of festiveness? There's a, there's a bit of a dullness in the air, isn't it? And if you're feeling a bit like that, a good question to ask over Christmas is, well, what gives real joy over Christmas? Well, you might say, well, you're in the church. The obvious reason is Jesus, isn't it? Jesus is the answer for everything for Christians. Well, yes, but how does Jesus give joy? How does Jesus give joy? That's what I want to look at with you this morning. To do that, we might have to uh, go back in time to the very first Christmas to hear something that was said on the night of the very first Christmas. If you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 2, the reading that we had this morning. On the night Jesus was born, verse 9, an angel appeared to a group of shepherds who were watching their flocks that night nearby. Verse 9 and 10, this, he said, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy to all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ, the Lord. Did you notice? On the first night of Christmas, the angel said the birth of Jesus was not just joy for uh, the parents of Jesus and, and his immediate family and friends. No, his birth was joy to all the earth, joy to the world. Why look at verse 11 again? Because he's your savior. He's the Christ. He's the Lord. So I want to briefly explore these three with you. And I must admit, these three titles, these three could be three different topics for three different sermons, but I'm not going to do that to you because you need to go for a Christmas lunch, probably. But the first reason why we have joy over Christmas, the real joy giver, is that we have a savior in Jesus. Recently, I saw this flood rescue. 
The, the, the rescue team had to go into this car that was almost drowning in the floods and he, they had to kind of risk their own lives and, and reach the, this person and then, then snatch this person out from this drowning car. Now that's what Jesus does, isn't it? He came to us. He lived among us. He, he suffered like one of us. Why? Because he came to rescue sinners from the effects of sin. In Romans chapter 1, if you have your Bibles, it tells us that, that we were enemies of God. We were objects of God's wrath. Why? Because we have abandoned the God who created us. We have disobeyed the God's, uh, God's good commands. And we have literally not worshipped him for who he is. But on Easter we remember, don't we, that Jesus actually died on a cross as an innocent man. Why? Uh, the prophet Isaiah who lived about 700 years before Jesus' birth in, in, his, in his book, chapter 53, he tells us that Jesus was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was laid on him. By his wounds, we are healed. You see, Jesus took our place on that cross. Why did Jesus do that? John 3.16, one of the very famous verses of the Bible, so that whoever believes in Jesus may not perish but have eternal life. Now to those who have believed in Jesus, his death and resurrection, God no longer treats them as his enemies or objects of wrath. No, he, he treats them as his children. We can actually call him our father. Do you hear that? Do you, do you believe that? That we have been rescued from God's wrath. We have been rescued from being perishing. And at Christmas, if you are a believer, then you can celebrate and you must celebrate because we have a savior in Jesus who has come down to us to rescue us from the consequences of sin. And if you haven't believed in Jesus, isn't this a great time to do that? So that you too can enjoy that joy that comes over Christmas, that lasting joy that is available for anyone and everyone who believes in Jesus. Perhaps you want to do that today. Wherever you are, take a moment to acknowledge what Jesus has done as our Savior. And the second reason why we can have great why we can have great joy is that Jesus is our eternal king. The angel said to uh, the shepherds that Jesus is not only your savior, but he is also the Christ, which is also Messiah or God's anointed king. Now, if you, if you look at uh, the history of Israel in the Old Testament, there were almost a, a couple of almost good kings, but there were no perfect kings. So we see around uh, 700 years before the birth of Jesus, again, the prophet Isaiah promising that God would send, actually God promising through prophet Isaiah, that he would send a king who would rule forever. Let me read for you from Isaiah chapter 9. You can read this too if you have your Bibles. Isaiah chapter 9. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of his greatness, of his government and peace, there will be no end. He is a king who would rule forever. And as we read through the New Testament, it shows that, that Jesus is this God's anointed king. 
When Jesus was born, you may remember, the wise men came from the east. They followed a star and then they, what did they say? They came and asked, where is the king born? Not just a baby, where is the baby? No, they said, where is the king born of the Jews? In John chapter 18, Jesus said, he is not a king of this, this earthly kingdom. No, he is the king of a, a, a heavenly kingdom. The ones who would be citizens of this kingdom are those who repent of their sins and believe in the Lord Jesus. And he said to those who seek or those who are part of this kingdom that God would add all things that they need for life. And you see, he is this king unlike any other earthly king, right? We have all the kings and rulers today who want to be served, but Jesus said, I come, I have come not to be served, but to serve. And after his death and the resurrection, in Romans chapter 8, verse 34, the apostle Paul says that Jesus ascended into heaven and he is now seated at the right hand of God, interceding for you and for me. And if you are a believer in Christ, we have this wonderful promise in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, which says, now we have access, direct access to God's throne room to receive mercy in time of need. You see, friends, we have this wonderful, wonderful news that, that the angels broke, isn't it? That we have a king in heaven who understands our pain and our sorrows, our struggles, who would not abandon us nor forsake us when we reach out to him, who comes to suffer with us, and he promises to provide all our needs according to the riches of his glory. And he promises to be with us, to protect us, to keep us close to him. And he promises to guide us through, through his Holy Spirit. And he fights for us. And he says, if I am for you, there's no one who shall be against you. I don't know about you, in a season where we have been battered by bushfires and, and pandemics and floods and death and violence, government falling and rising and financial crisis, in a season where some of us are struggling to find our way through, in a season where earthly kings and presidents and prime ministers don't know what they are doing, we must hear what the angels had to say to the shepherds because that is for us as well. You have great news of great joy because the baby born in the manger, he is Christ, God's anointed king. He is the king that you and I need today. Make him. Make him your king. Trust him. Serve him. Obey him as your king. And the final reason why Christmas brings great joy is because Jesus is Lord. The Hebrew Bible often used the word Lord to describe God. So when the angels actually come and tell the shepherds that the one who is born today is the Lord, they're actually saying the mystery of all mysteries that God has come down to us. On the one hand, the Bible tells us that it, is, it makes us so clear that Jesus, he, he was fully human. He was born as a baby, grew up as a child, like any other person. He got hungry, he got thirsty, he felt pain, and he knew joy, and he knew sorrow, and he knew what it was to be tempted like you and me. But the, but the Bible also tells us that Jesus was fully God at the same time. And this is a profound mystery, my friends, that we will not be able to explain away this side of heaven. But when Jesus was born, God himself came to live among us. Jesus was God in human flesh. Emmanuel, the song that we sang earlier, God with us. And as we read the gospel stories, I invite you to do if you haven't done that so far, we see glimpses of Jesus' divinity, don't we? 
He had the power to power over sickness. He had the power over the nature. He had the power to forgive sins. He had power over death because he raised the dead. And reflecting on all these things, the Apostle Paul writes to the Colossian church this beautiful paragraph about Jesus. And let me read this for us this morning. Colossians chapter 1. Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven or on earth, things visible, invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created for him and by him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Again, this year has been a very difficult for all of us, isn't it? Lives have literally been turned around, turned upside down. A virus that cannot be even seen by a naked eye has taught us this very, very important lesson, isn't it? That none of us have control over life. Or none of us know what go what's going to happen tomorrow. We can plan until the cows come home, but all those plans can be changed overnight. But as we tried earlier this year, didn't we? we? We tried to do this. We tried to have control over lives uh, by collecting as many toilet paper rolls as we can or collecting as many pasta packets we can, but we couldn't. See, not having control is a very fearful place to be, isn't it? It's a gloomy, dark, sad place to be. But as we read these words of the Apostle Paul, as you've heard them read, we should have great confidence, comfort, and joy in the midst of any type of difficulty. Because Jesus whom we celebrate on Christmas Day, the Jesus whom we have believed, the Jesus whom we serve, the Jesus, Jesus whom we belong to, is God himself. He is the creator of the universe. There's no one wiser than him. There's no one powerful than him. We should not fear death because he has conquered death and, and he holds power over death. He knows what holds tomorrow because he knows the end from the beginning. He is the one who holds everything together. And we have these wonderful promises. Nothing happened without his knowledge. And he is able to work out everything well for those whom he loves. And when no one is around, he is with us. Now isn't that something to be joyful today? See, the first Christmas, friends, um, it was without all these add-ons, isn't it? Mary and Joseph had to give birth to their firstborn child in a borrowed stable in a smelly barn because they didn't have room in the inn. There was no decorations, no tinsels, no baubles or bells, no one to put up a Christmas tree and lights, no gifts, no singing probably, no fancy food or fancy dresses. But you know what? There was joy that first Christmas. True joy that is available for everyone, anyone, everywhere, because Jesus is the Savior, the Lord, and the King. You may feel that there is not much to be joyful this Christmas. No family or friends around, can't go on holidays, and some of us don't have work. We don't know what will happen after the job keeper stops. Sickness, death, grieving, 
fear, uncertainty, and some of us struggle with sin and addictions that, that we want to so get rid of, but we can't. And you may be sad because usually the things that usually brought joy over Christmas is missing this time around. You may be feeling sad because you miss seeing the parade. Now, isn't that good that you have missed the parade? Don't get me wrong. I pray that you get to enjoy some of those things that you miss over Christmas. But even if you do, don't forget to enjoy the circus. Don't forget to give thanks to God for Jesus, which is the greatest reason of joy in Christmas. Jesus, our Savior, the King, and the Lord, the real reason which brings joy, everlasting joy, over Christmas and any time, any season of our lives. Let's pray. Our gracious, loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We sometimes ignore who he really is until everything that filled his place is taken away. And if, if that is what it is for some of us today, Father, help us to see that only Jesus can fill that gap. Only Jesus can give us great joy. No matter who we are today, where we come from, whatever the past has been, whatever we are going through right now, help us to see Jesus, our Savior, our King, our Lord. And may he bring us joy, everlasting joy. Because he is the joy, joy to the world. It is in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing our last song, which is joy to the world. Please stand as we are led in singing. <laughs>